For several thousand years, man has been wrapping fabric around his head to keep little bits of stuff from going in his lungs and essentially killing him. And this has kind of evolved over time. Recently in the fashion trends, people are really into shemogs, which is great if you lived 200,000 years ago. But unfortunately, technology, you know, it uh, it kind of left the shemog behind. And now we're able to move forwards in a bright new future. But people don't want to, you know, adopt the new technology. They want to they want to go with the old stuff because it's it's fashion, right? And we don't like fashion. We like function over form. And that's why I picked up this handy dandy little this is super cool. Now you think you then go, Sean, why are you looking at me with a piece of fabric? It's called a buff rag. And I guess they patented it or whatever, but I mean, you can do anything with these things. Now, first of all, it has instant badass appeal because the minute you put it around your neck, over top of your hat, because you gotta leave your hat on, boom, you're in the SAS, just like that. Instantly badass. Now beyond that, of course, if you're out there and you actually are worried about particulates, you can breathe through the bad boy, which is pretty sweet, up over top. Able to keep talking, no problem, you know, no one would look at you funny on the street or nothing. It's very, very good. And if you get it wet and keep it around your neck at like Burning Man or whatever, it's going to keep you cool. I am the biggest fan of this particular uh, item in the world. When you buy them, they give you this little cardboard cutout. They show you all the different ways you can wear it, but there's stuff online too and stuff. You bring it up over top. You can ninja right out with it. I mean, you can do anything with these things. I love them. I think they're fantastic and they're cheap, which is, you know, the key. You got to have it cheap. If you're in an environment like this, you're going to want to make sure you keep your body temperature down because it'll sneak up on you. It'll sneak up on you. It provides a little bit of added protection on your neck, on your face. Buff rags, very wog invention and good to keep up with. Quite often, you don't ever get to give credit where credit is due. See, there's this guy who brought a knife to the Western world, and his name was Steve Tarani. Steve Tarani came up, uh, well, he didn't actually found the idea of the Crambit, and that name's been patented and trademarked and everything. You're not allowed to call them Crambits anymore, but it's a small curved knife that's used by, I think it was Polynesians and Indonesians, but it's hard to say, because all these people are different indigenous types, and they don't have trademark in tribes. So what they do is they just, you know, they have a good idea and they share it, which is how, you know, people get smarter and evolve as, as groups and stuff. So Steve came back and uh, I think there was some copyright issues that got involved, but you know, Steve Tarani was the guy who brought the curved blade knife to North America. Sort of like the same way that Bruce Lee brought martial arts to North America and you know, he deserves the credit for that. Steve Tarani is the guy who brought the curved blade karambit to America, period, full stop. You know, there's a lot of people who say, oh no, 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 he doesn't own that anymore. No, 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 no. The guy did a great thing by introducing the curved blade knives as a daily carry uh, item, really, as far as knives. Now, in the folding knife world, I used to carry an Emerson Striker, but since then I've gone with exclusively curved blade knives. And this one here is a Steve Tranny knife, and it's made by 511. It's really, really affordable. It's about 80 bucks. And the beautiful thing about them is, is that for one thing, well, it looks crazy. It looks like you, you, you carve people up with it, which is fun because, you know, people ask you for the knife to open the bag of chips. You hand them this thing and they're like, oh my God, what is that thing? For actual use, it's probably single-handedly the greatest useful work knife I've ever used in my life, period, full stop. It's better than any straight blade. You have a, an awesome point on it. You're able to utilize it when you hold it in a nice pick grip. It, uh, well, it turns kind of nasty, but when you hold it in the normal grip up here, it's actually extremely useful for cutting rope. It's like a giant serration. And the best part is, it's like a three inch blade. Who could possibly be afraid of a three inch blade? It's small, super portable, has this awesome big ring on the end and there's several different variations. Spyderco makes one, uh, I think Emerson makes one now, 511 makes the most affordable of the bunch and even they make a, a more affordable version than the one I'm carrying now. But you could tie this off, you could beaner it, you could hook it on your gear, it's right there, it's ready to go, multiple mounting options, strip and assemble the whole knife, which don't buy any folder anywhere unless you can totally disassemble and reassemble the knife because you have to clean it, especially if you're surrounded by this crap, which I promise you will get into all the working gears of every single piece of metal kit you own. So I'm here to tell you, if you're looking for a carry option and you're just not feeling the love from the straight blades, thank you, Steve Durrani. Thank you for introducing us to the Crambit. The debate rages between the floppy hat and the ball cap. So let's just put that to bed right now. The ball cap is not here for sun protection. The floppy hat is here for sun protection. The ball cap is here to keep the sun out of your eyes for when you're catching the ball. Hence, ball cap. It is not providing any protection on the side of your head, the back of your neck, nothing. If you go in with the floppy hat, the floppy hat actually gives you protection over your entire head, your neck, your ears, sides of your face, your nose, the whole deal. It protects you from the sun 
which is the source of all power and life in the universe. So it's really, really strong and will burn you and will kill you if you stay in it long enough. So if you're gonna be out in an environment where you're in the wilderness, you use a floppy hat. Undoubtedly, it could be argued that it does not look as cool as the ball cap. However, what's the motto? That's right, function over form. And if you're gonna wanna go one step further, Get yourself the boonie, run the wire out of it, see previous episodes, and use a chin strap, because otherwise, the wind will take it. And when the wind starts taking stuff, well, that's no good for anyone. They don't rent fucking sand rails in Oregon anymore. It's all ATVs. Which I'm sorry, I mean, ATVs are cool and everything, but they're like four-wheel motorbikes. There's no roll cage. You know, there's no safety involved with that. You know, you got these, these ATVs tearing ass everywhere and you could buy a sand rail. We can't rent sand rails in Oregon. What kind of a sick world do you live in where you can't rent a sand rail near the biggest freaking dunes in America. Like, I don't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me. You know, there is an opportunity for wogs to make money. Apparently, nobody thinks sand rails are cool anymore. Apparently not. We'll start in Oregon. We'll move to the Middle East, because they don't got sand rails in the Middle East either. You think Iraq, Iran, they got nothing but sand over there. Buddy, ditch the camel. I have got an option for you, my friend. But no, 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 no. It's, uh, it's not gonna work. So, unfortunately, if you're gonna come to Oregon, your choices are ATVs and ATVs. Sucks. Sucks.